It is something that has been in the spotlight for a long time, especially here in our area as we have the Cyber Center for Excellence at Fort Gordon and all the developments that are happening because of that. Also, a lot of attention in the recent election turned toward Russia and its hacking scandal, if you will, or at least hacking controversy that made headlines right here at home as we were trying to select the next president. You know, the National Intelligence Report, in fact, that came out last week, steadfastly claimed that the Russian hacking that led to the breaking into of the DNC, Democratic National Committee servers, came directly from the Kremlin. That information just out. Well, CNN's Fred Pleitchen spoke with one of Russia's foremost hacking journalists, Andrei Soltatov. He shed more light on how the Kremlin initiates and contacts hackers, usually from the private sector, to make those hackers at the disposal of the Kremlin and then to help them cover their tracks. The U.S. intelligence community says it's certain Russia hacked Democratic National Committee servers on orders from Vladimir Putin, aiming to help Donald Trump win the presidency. I sat down with one of Russia's premier cyber journalists, Andrei Soldatov, co-author of the book The Red Web. His assessment is clear. Well, I think that the Kremlin was uh, involved uh, and uh, given the background and the history of all cyber offensive uh, launched launched by the Kremlin over the last, say, 10 years, uh, at least since 2007, at le uh, it looks very plausible to me. The Putin administration has vehemently denied claims that it's behind the hacking attacks, calling the assessments absurd and, quote, a witch hunt. But Andrei Soldatov says the Kremlin often turns to private cybersecurity firms to carry out similar operations. They have this mark that they usually are not directly uh, sponsored by the state because it would help uh, the Kremlin to create plausible deniability. But he says many of those working for such firms are fiercely loyal to the Russian state, some even trained by Russian intelligence services. It's still the same thing, basically. It's still about security, it's still about loyalty, it's still about the military industrial complex. So the problem is that these people might be very easily approached by the state. And we already saw some examples when some people from some same ministry might approach a very good company, IT company based in Moscow, and to ask to help with some sensitive things. And usually this kind of help might be provided. As for a possible motive, Soldatov believes, at least in the early stages, it was more about hurting Hillary Clinton than helping Donald Trump. She's always seen as a kind of uh, enemy of the, of, of the state because a lot of people in the Kremlin uh, believed that she was behind the Moscow protests in uh, uh, 2011 and 2012 when she was uh, state secretary. So uh, it looks quite natural to try to undermine her positions. While Russian officials continue to deny any involvement in hacking around the U.S. elections, they also say they hope for a more positive attitude towards their country once Donald Trump takes office. Interesting information there and interesting information coming down this week in Augusta as Georgia Governor Nathan Deal announced $50 million to be invested from the state in the CSRA so they could build a cyber innovation and training center. It is going to be a place where people can go obviously to learn about the world of cyber, to learn about how to fight the hackers that you heard about there, and then practice their skills right there on the same property. It's almost like having your schooling and your internship all under the same roof. It's going to be incredible, a sight to behold as it comes out of the ground there at the old Georgia Golf and Gardens property in downtown Augusta. Here's Mike Miller. We have a chance for Georgia and specifically Augusta to become the cyber capital of the United States, if not the world. It's a $50 million investment that many are calling a game changer, a world-class cyber range and training facility on the Augusta Riverfront. What this cyber range is, is a safe environment where you can actually engage in cyber war. You can attack a computer and you can defend from an attack on a computer. So it is a real life situation. With hacking making the headlines a lot these days, state leaders wanted to get ahead of the problem before matters get worse. Not necessarily do we all know the impact, but when we start seeing what's happening um, through the elections, I think people are beginning to realize, well, I'm not saying it wasn't serious before, 
but it actually impacts me as an individual. The Georgia Cyber Innovation and Training Center will be the cyber hub for education, business, and government. The proposed 150,000 square foot facility will also be the new home of Augusta University's Cyber Institute. School officials expect the place to be busy. Students, faculty, staff, but also an influx, a continuing influx of additional personnel who are getting advanced training and additional training within the uh, agencies of the state, within other private corporations, as well as businesses that may want to be actually incubated there. The Cyber Institute has already doubled its enrollment numbers, and with this announcement, more growth is expected. This is another aspect of making sure that folks across this country know that Georgia is what's happening. So you should know that I attended the, the Georgia Economic Outlook luncheon this past week, as many of you may have, and the focus at that, both from a state perspective and certainly from a local perspective, was on the world of cyber. So it's no longer just this pipe dream. It's no longer just talk the people and the businesses and as importantly the students who are going to learn all about cyber and be our leaders in that world are coming. It's all happening right now. 2017, the start of something very exciting. You're going to see them moving dirt down there on Riddled Street. Construction expected to start in the spring. And then Dr. Keel mentioned it will really happen quickly. Should only take about 18 months to finish that incredible facility. So as we prepare for that cyber expansion in the CSRA, you know, some states already have programs underway that are helping college students and veterans get their foot in the door when it comes to technology including a campus where they're getting real life lessons from computer and cyber experts that come talk to them and show them how something as simple as your smartphone, as simple as an app on one of your devices can be a gateway for cyber criminals and they're learning how to fight that. With this tool we can actually safely extract the, this uh, image from this phone and do forensic analysis on it. Yeah. Cynthia found a vulnerability in a popular messaging app used by millions. You've exposed that this app basically you could go in and if somebody's using it you could extract all their personal information, pictures, videos, Yes. anything. This is just one app, there's more. An Army veteran, she's now hoping to make a difference on the cyber battlefield. Same with Joseph Ricci, a Navy veteran. I'd like to get involved with, you know, federal government, try to help, you know, bolster our defenses as far as preventing these hacks from happening. This, as the world has seen cybersecurity breaches dominate headlines for months. This is uh, huge. This is critical. I mean, these are things that we depend on every day that, you know, I think people take for granted which could be taken away easily just because of a lack of cybersecurity. Training for T.J. Ballin includes nationwide hacking competitions like breaking into the servers of a make-believe hospital. No problem. You could get client data, addresses, social security numbers, everything that a hospital normally stores. Knowing how to do it so they can stop it. The need for students like this at a time like this couldn't be greater. There's more demand than there's supply. Last I, I read, there was about one million job openings uh, in cybersecurity. And you're talking about people that go out and, you know, undergraduate students that go out and make starting salary of anywhere between eighty-five dollars to $120,000 a year. In a world more cyber-connected than ever, the threats from identity fraud to national security are higher than ever. If you can manipulate social networks like Twitter in such a way where you can send a massive message that's going to reach millions of people and that message is actually fake, essentially you are using the cyber world to affect people's thought processes. And that's really something that's super powerful.